Hello and welcome to another Trippy McMuffin video. Today I'll be reviewing the epic classic movie of the 1980s. Of course, it is Stanley Kubrick's second best movie, The Shining. It is just a masterpiece of a psychological horror slash thriller with Jack Nicholson starring as a total psychopath. He is just, it is his best performance. Uh, you know, as we all know, it's based on Stephen King's um, novel. Uh, starring, of course, uh, Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall, Danny Lloyd, and Scatman Crothers. Um, it's... Right. Okay, um, The Shining is, of course, we all know the story, that it's a man, Jack Torrance, who gets the job so he can get some peace, so he can write his play. Or like a, like a short story or something, so they ask these hotel um, boss if they could, well, for the job, you know, to stay there, and of course Jack takes the interview, and he gets the interview, and they they travel in the yellow car across the highway of the beautiful beautiful cinematography. Of course, um, he uses a lot of good cinematographers. Uh, well, to be honest, um, he is, a, of course, he was a photographer himself, Stanley Kubrick. Anyway, so he gets the interview, and he um, succeeds on that, and they drive to the hotel. No one's there except for... No, wrong, actually. Everyone is still there. Um, sorry. Uh, they drive up there. Then they uh the family talk more to um the people, the owner, and of course Danny has his problems by talking to Tony. But to be honest, I've read the book myself and the book is it's it's better in terms of the way they did the psychological lesson in it. The film is a bit different. I didn't like the way he he was talking to Tony with his finger, you know. I didn't like that. Um They should have just got a, a little boy in there, so you can see him, like they did with twins. Uh, of course, there was a lot of controversy over this film between him and Stephen King, because they never got along, and of course it's completely different in its own way to the book. Anyway, I'm going off a bit, sorry. Then it goes on to... Uh, oh, what's his name? Hang on. That's right, Dick Halloran. Uh... Has have an ice cream and uh, with Danny. Danny, yeah, and they're talking about the shining. And to be honest, Danny isn't really saying much about it. But before that, they show about the storage rooms and um, how much you can eat. You can eat for like years. So, you know, in terms of food storage wise, three or four years. That's what he said. But then. It's, it's then, um, okay, now it is showing them on their own, those three people, in the hotel, all alone, in the snow mountains, or whatever. They, of course, he is writing his play, he's throwing balls at a wall, uh, they're running around in mazes, and it's just so on, and um, it gets into arguments between him and uh, Wendy about, you know, because he needs some peace and all. I, to be honest, I wish there was a backstory of more on Jack, because in the book there was all about him and his dad. You know, he loved his dad, but he always beat him up in his own ways. Uh, about how he lost his job with his teacher because he uh, got into a fight with a student. That sort of thing. They didn't have that in the film. To be honest, it's a bit of a pain in the ass about that. Uh, but... Yeah. Before I started this, I wanted to say uh, that, of course, that the hotel was built on American... Native, Native American burial ground. Yeah. Okay, so then, uh, Dick Holleran says not to go into the room 237, because he has seen horrible things. 
Of course, um, Danny doesn't... Well, he doesn't... Li it's not because he doesn't listen. It's just because he jumps up with his Apollo 11 t-shirt and playing with his toy cars and he sees the room. There's this door opened. So he goes in and... Um, it's implied that he gets um, grappled, grippled by the throat. And he's talking to his mother. But then, but of course, she thinks that Jack did it because of his history of breaking his arm. And there was a few arguments, there was a lot of sad scenes about that. And um, then Jack went himself. <sighs> Fuck's sake. And um, he met his naked woman. Hug, kiss, caress, and all, but he notices that he, she herself has turned into this horrible, naked, disgusting, foul, melting, ugly bastard running after him, making this weird sound. To be honest, I saw this in the documentary about the moon landings of the film, there's something to do with it, and I was scared by the pictures of it, slow motion, but I watched the film, it's just not scary at all. I I'm waiting for it to be scared, I'm like this. But that wasn't scary at all. It wasn't a scary movie. It's just more of the imagination. So, uh, of course, we know the famous iconic scene of him, of Danny going around his little kiddie's bike. I don't know the words I'm going to say to you. is kiddie's bike. Then he's going down the hallway and sees these two twins. Um, these two sorts of weird little girls. Um, and he says, they, of course, you know, they say, come play with Danny forever and ever and ever. And every time they say forever and ever ever, uh, he sees them just mutilated with a cut up an axe, cut up with an axe and his blood and guts go everywhere. My type. So after that then, there was... That's right. I love this scene. It's basically, uh, she is then going to look, she, she goes around, looks at the typewriter, of course, and finds his story. It turns out the whole time they, they've been there for a few months, <sighs> that um, he has just gone mad in his own horrible way by writing all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy constantly on thousands of pages well thousands, hundreds of pages in totally different ways and uh, she walks back because Jack finds out you know, like like the story and all and uh, she threatens him with a baseball bat he gets hit of course and drags to a storage room for food uh, to be honest, one thing that's disappointing is that if you know, if you watch The Simpsons in their own way they do these trios of horrors, they always make these references. And they do these sort of episodes based on these films that kids watch and they have no idea what they're about. It's annoying because you just they just give the story away. Uh, okay, um... Once Jack gets out of the storage room, he goes to the, the house, the apartment. And before that, Danny, uh, Tony... Oh, Tony is controlling Danny by putting red rum, spelt backwards for murder, on the door. Uh, but then they hide in the bathroom because then Jack comes in, smashes the axe and says, here's Johnny. And before that, of course, Danny gives a shining. I don't know how it works, but he gives a shining to uh, Dick Halloran. Um, he comes along, but of course they slip out of the window and she like cuts his hand something but then uh then oh sorry sorry very 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 sorry um uh, then then it went to the part where he is chasing Danny and he traces his tracks and he is lost in the maze jack and fr freezes to death they drive away in the snow Cartmobile, or whatever, and uh, Dick Halloran's dead. To be honest, in the book, it was a better ending. I think it was a better ending. I, I don't know. But then it was a better ending. He doesn't die in the book, he dies in the film, though. 
the 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 room in the book is two hundred and twenty seven, not two three seven. And in the book, it's a red car, not a yellow car. There are some several changes in the film to the book. But what's always, always confused me is the ending. The ending's different to the book. It just ends with Jack's face like covered with snow and he's just freezing to death and then it ends to go forward of the camera to this picture of uh, Jack in the hallway of the gold room um, in a crowded party, you know, it's just it's strange because it, it's saying that he has been there the whole time, he has been the caretaker of the Overlook Hotel for ages, years because before that, he was accusing that this butler, because his name was, re he remembered his name, that he killed his daughter to these twins. But turned out he did it. It was a confusing sort of way, because I, I read the book and then I read the film, but, um, you know, it was just, uh, you know, I've been staring at this film for like years and I see the film, it's, it's kind of disappointing for me, but... I watched it myself the second time, it's, it felt better for me. It was a really good psychological thriller film, and I'm really glad I've seen it. I'm glad I'm giving my opinion and my story of the film, because it's just an amazing film. Great cast, it, it was just great performances from the actors and actresses. And of course, it was one of Stanley Kubrick's, uh, well, um biggest things to do because you know he tortured Shelley Duvall. What I mean by torture because uh, when I, there were some scenes in the film that she had no idea what was happening. He had to make it so real for the film. And uh, yeah, that's really it. Yeah. For the cinematography and the way they did the snow and all, it was just, well, not the way they did the fucking snow, but you know what I mean. It was really good. It was a well film, well good film. And I'm gonna give The Shining out of 10 and 8. An 8 out of 10. This is a brilliant film, and I love it, and it's a great horror movie. Uh, that's it, really. I'm Trippy McMuffin. I would be a different person, but don't worry about it. <sighs> if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, all support is appreciated. Now I have 7 subscribers, which is a lot better than 6, so thank you very much. And, um, please check out my other videos, my React Watch Mojo's, my album reviews, my graphic novel reviews, my unboxings, my base videos, my talk videos. Just check them out. It does me a huge favor. And please subscribe. Okay, uh, that's it really. 8 out of 10 for The Shining. Uh, check out my brother's channel, uh, Ministry of Music. He has more subscribers than me and he's got more likes and more views, but don't worry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Goodbye.